most soil in most places is rubbish. And if you want to grow good quality plants, you need good quality soil. But improving the soil fertility is not that difficult and you can also do it for free. The reason soil quality in most places isn't very good is there just isn't much organic matter going back into the soil. You know, originally this would have all been forests, the trees fall down, they rot into, this, into the earth, and the soil quality keeps improving. But then people came, this would have all been cut back, slash and burn, and farmers would have grown crops or grazed animals on it. The problem is, is because there's nothing going into the soil, within about three years, typically, farmers would then move on and slash and burn more land. And obviously that's not kind of sustainable. And so soil quality around the world is slowly degrading. When it comes to adding fertility back to the land, there's several ways of doing it. You can do it cheaply and you can also do it quickly. But as is usually the case in life, those things are kind of inversely proportional. This is the most expensive method, I would say, but it is the quickest method. It's just ordering compost. I got this from a landscaping supply store. Landscaping places are way cheaper than buying from garden centers, but they're still not that cheap. The quality's okay. It's not as good as the stuff I make at home. Um, you can just see sort of looking at it. Uh, this, isn't, this is pretty decent stuff, actually. It's not too bad, but there is quite a lot of sort of unbroken down wood chips in it. But that's the nature of it that, you know, if someone's trying to make a profit on this, they're trying to churn this stuff out the door as quickly as they can. And so quite often the wood chip will have not fully broken down, but that doesn't mean it can't be used. I'm growing crops successfully in this and it does work, but there's a cost to it. So I'll show you some ways of adding fertility for free. This is probably my favorite way to add fertility to the garden. This is a pile of wood chip. It was out here somewhere. And I think it's actually a pretty cheap way of doing things. This was, in US dollars, it was $120 for a whole truckload. The great thing about wood chip is that it has a kind of dual purpose. So when you first put it down, you're using it as a mulch. So you're protecting the roots, which means that in the summer when you're getting the really hot rays, it's protecting the soil around that. And it means that the soil doesn't just kind of dry out. And then in the winter when it's cold, it's almost like a blanket. It's keeping that plant warm at the base. So it serves a great purpose as a mulch. And then over time, takes about two years roughly, it starts to break down and then you get this incredible kind of black, organic, rich compost around your soil. When I'm putting wood chip down, I'll generally use about, for a small tree, I'll put down about one wheelbarrow full and for a slightly larger tree like this, maybe a couple. So that's quite a lot of wood chip. It's probably like this deep. And you can see the stuff that I've put down recently. So this stuff here, which, you know, that obviously has not composted down much at all. You go beneath that layer and just down here you can see that we've already got something that's kind of i mean it's effectively compost it's pretty close to there's definitely still some woody bits in that haven't broken down yet but just in that two year period we've got some pretty healthy looking soil and when i start to kind of like look around with my hands here i can see that there are some kind of finer thinner roots from this that's kind of so the tree is actually coming up to that new area of soil and getting nutrition from it. The problem with trees and grass is that they are competing for the same resources. And so when you plant a tree, grass, even if you kind of weed it all out, grass is pretty quickly just gonna go back into that space and it's gonna go right up to the trunk of the tree. And then the tree is gonna suffer because when you kind of dig up grass, you see just how kind of dense and matted all of that sort of root structure is. So it's quite difficult for the tree to get in amongst all of that and survive. So it's a kind of either or thing. And you know, you can either go around carefully making borders and weeding them and digging out bits of grass and digging out bits of weeds, or you can be lazy about it and just dump compost or dump wood chip like I'm doing in this case. And there's no chance with all the light that's been blocked, all of the weeds and the grass underneath there will just die which will allow the tree to survive and to kind of use that kind of dead decaying roots from all of the grass and the grass itself which is just going to leave nitrogen underneath here and eventually this will kind of rot down a bit and then there's a chance that um, the grass could come back up 
but then you could just in another couple of years just add on a little bit more wood chip. If you want that wood chip to break down even faster, what you could do is add some green. So I've been adding them to my compost heap and then I add on a lot of coffee and some grass clippings. And in that situation, I fill up a meter cubed of them and it probably takes about four or five months, something like that. And in that time, they'll break down to really good compost. For both of the methods I've talked about, there is a cost attached to it, even if it's just a small cost for the delivery of the wood chip. What happens if you want to grow your own fertility? Well, it's kind of pretty easy. The only difference is it just takes a little bit longer. So this is something I would really recommend. These are Mexican sunflower or titonia. They're also called tree marigold. The really great thing about this plant is just how fertile it is. This thing has more nitrogen than chicken manure. So it's incredibly fertile. It also has the full kind of NPK, so it does have potassium and phosphorus as well. And the fact that you can just grow it and then chuck it down rather than paying for it from the shops is incredible. Another cool thing about this is just the sheer size of it. Like this is probably about eight foot, 10 foot, something like that. So if you wanted to use it as a fence or something like that for a bit of privacy it would grow super fast i mean this has probably been in eight months so you're looking at eight months from something this big to being able to like block out your neighbors and it will also block out the wind to some degree you can see some of these are leaning a little bit um, and we get we get hammered by the wind here um, but it does make a reasonable wind block this does come with a small word of warning. I saw a video on YouTube and this guy was just having a nightmare with them. They were all over the place and he was trying to cut them back. And, and I watched it and he was saying, it's the worst thing I've ever planted on my land. And so I watched it thinking, wow, what problem does he have? And I realized he obviously has a different variety or that, that basically seeds. And then so the seeds are fertile and they were just spread all over his land and it created a complete nightmare. Um, so when you're getting this, you do need to make sure that you get a variety that does not seed like this one. In a lot of places, this is an invasive weed, but the deal is it gets into places where grass is, it grows, it sends down this chemical which prevents the grass growing, and then it creates this kind of biomass. It's for this reason it's known as a forest forerunner. So if you're looking to start a food forest, this could be a good starting point. I was given just a handful of these stems from a friend. I put maybe five in the ground and let's say, I don't know, three or four of them took. And from that, I could take as many cuttings as I want. So if you wanted to do something like a whole fence line of them, it would be really easy. And you're just creating tons and tons of kind of valuable biomass. I'll show you what happens. So you kind of, the very end bit is quite um, sort of bendy and you cut that off. And, and leave that on the ground. That's your kind of chop and drop that you use as your sort of soil fertilizer. And then this kind of woodier bit, you leave it in water for, that's been in about two days now. And you can see that these little white dots are just beginning to form along here. Um, once they get a touch bigger, um, then you just plant that in the ground and you're done. So from all this lot, you can see that I'll have an enormous amount of kind of soil nutrition for free. Another good way to improve soil fertility for free is to grow a cover crop. So you could grow mustard, you could grow borage, vetch, there are loads of things, peas, beans, all those kind of nitrogen fixing plants will really help. They help in two ways. One is that the roots that they put down kind of break up the soil and when the plant dies, that kind of space that they have created is then full of kind of organic matter and various kind of bacteria are going to get in and break that stuff down. And then you've also got the crop that exists outside of the ground that you can then sort of either push down and use as a mulch or kind of compost it all, or you can plow it into the soil. There's lots of options. I'm not a massive fan of cover crops. The reason for that is that they take up space in your growing bed. So things like titonia are great. You can just dig a hole in the middle of the grass and they'll grow right there. The problem with cover crops is you do actually need a bed and therefore when it's in the bed, you're not actually growing crops. I've left this one until last because most people that garden already know about comfrey, but it isn't just the fact that this thing has loads of nutrients and is a nitrogen fixer. Another cool thing about it 
is that you can kind of use it without having to buy any mulch. And I did this as a bit of a sort of an experiment. So every other tree that I planted, I put in a huge amount of wood chip all around the tree. With this one, I didn't bother and I just left the grass and I thought, I'll see what will happen. And I put, I think I put either three or four plants. And I mean, it's winter now and so they're looking the least healthy they have all year. And yet still, you cannot see a single blade of grass down there just because they kind of shade everything out. I mean, this is really dense down here. If I pull the leaves back, you can see that beneath here, you have the kind of older leaves which are dying. I haven't cut this back, I've just left it. And, and naturally the kind of leaves that are getting uh, older at the back here are kind of just dying, falling down on the ground and then creating this kind of carpet of black rotting comfrey which means that the grass isn't able to get established and it's getting nitrogen and they have long roots so they're bringing nitrogen from deeper down into the ground they're bringing it up into their leaves and then when they die they're then laying that that nitrogen on the upper levels of the soil this is a really young tree and i don't think its roots would be going down particularly deep so this is basically helping this to live and it's free at the start of this video, I was sitting next to that tiny little tree this big planted in a load of clay. And the reason I'm finishing it here is because this is the exact same type of plant. This is a tamarillo and it's in a bucket of compost that I made myself. This has been growing for less time than that little plant over there. This one's only been in about six months and already it is looking so much healthier. And I just wanted to show you this just to see that difference that good quality compost and good quality soil can make. And if you want to know how to make compost really well and really fast, have a look at this video here that I'll link to. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.